So hi, this is Larry with Unique Medical, and I am in the house at TaylorMade Compounding. I'm really excited to be here. This is actually a really cutting edge, awesome, awesome place. It's almost like a like Google for, for peptides. It's really interesting. And I got my buddy here, Ryan Smith um, of TaylorMade. He's been a real uh, pivotal person in my peptide journey, so I'm really thankful to uh, have had him around. Um, and I kind of want to start this because we're going to get people pumped up about peptides, man. Yeah. So we're going to do like a conversational piece about peptides and what we do and why we do it and yeah. what we like and what we don't like about certain things. Um, but before we talk about them and get them inside them, why don't you tell them why they shouldn't buy this stuff online? Because they're going to hear about it, but why they shouldn't buy it online. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think the best way to frame it is, you know, acting like, you know, I'm, I'm a consumer. Like, I don't know anything that we do. And I think that, uh, you know, the one thing I've seen time and time again is, uh, you know, people having a reaction to the product, an unfortunate reaction, mm -hmm. um, or people not getting the results they want. Yeah, right. I think those are the two biggest things that you, you, you would see without knowing any of the science behind it. But whenever you dive into the science, you see that it's really hard to make these things. It's really hard to keep them pure, keep them stable. Right. Uh, and beyond that, you know, some of these other third-party sources have validated these things and say that 80% of the product online is fraudulent and fake, like that New York Times article like, I always yeah. reference when we yeah. talk. Um, and so that is, the, so knowing what you're getting, uh, knowing that you're, what you're getting is dosed correctly, um, and then it's not dangerous. I think all those three things are reasons I wouldn't buy it online, but also, it speaks to a bigger picture. I wrote a, an article on Ben Greenfield's uh, site talking about um, some of the ways which peptides can, can maybe cause some issues, and sure. they need to be medically managed. And sure. that's, uh, you know, and it gets complicated really, really quickly. I know some of the products we'll probably talk about today, like yeah. the LO37, you know, can be great in autoimmune, also can be terrible in autoimmune, right. or they can be great in cancer, also can get terrible in cancer. And right. so, you know, the, that back and forth is why it needs to be medically managed. You absolutely need to have a, uh, you know, a provider who is, 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 listening to you and your issues and your needs and your wants, mm -hmm. but also has, you know, like you, been to these masterminds, these trainings, mm -hmm. had their head in all this literature. They need to, to have that in order to get the best peptide care. Yeah, I completely agree, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I use TMC specifically because one, I trust Brian. I've, I've <laughs> known him for a while. And two, TaylorMade makes a phenomenal product that you can depend on. So I use them exclusively, I, you know, yeah, you, all absolutely. that I use. Yeah. Um, so let's kind of jump into this is a question that I actually really want to know. Yeah. Um, what peptides are you taking, <laughs> and which are like your favorite? Yeah. You know, and you know, you can break that into what you do for your body, what you yeah. do for your mind. So just kind of start opening up, and I'll ask questions as we go, so that let's try to get a nice variety of peptides, sure. so that yeah. people can learn a little more. And then I'll even talk about mine and what I do and why I do it. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think that uh, you know. The things that I've always been interested in just uh, within myself are, you know, everyone, you know, unfortunately, you know, a little bit of vanity, always is sure. in a little bit interested in body comp, but beyond right. that, I'm very, very interested in my brain. Uh, keeping it healthy, I've got some genetic variants predisposed me to Alzheimer's, so I would say those, uh, the performance aspect of it and then the, uh, the mental performance aspect of it have always been my, my two biggest categories. Um, recently, you know, more of the longevity stuff has come to, to be, so, Focusing a little bit more on like senolytics, um, uh -huh. you know, the mitochondrial products, those types of things have now been. I should say the three areas of focus for me. Uh -huh. um, you know, I you know if something comes up like an in shoulder injury when I'm you know working out or something like that, I'll I'll do more of the repair and recovery type stuff. But I would say that those three are the biggest areas. Um, starting with you know the the some of the. The performance type aspects. Sure. Yeah, that's uh, probably what yeah. most people want to hear about. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's well, I mean, and it's uh, it's it's always good because you know the performance is also highly related to health, right? Yeah. You know, uh, reducing your your visceral adipose tissue, your inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, so it, you know, it's even though it, it might be a little vain, it's also extremely healthy. Sure. Um, and so the things that I, you know, the the growth hormone secreting uh, you know, are always one that I immediately went to because. Um, I had a relatively low IGF-1 for, for uh, my age, uh, pretty low IGF-1 for my age. Right. And so targeting that automatically made a huge difference to me. I, I started using the CJC of Amorlin, um and had just immediately better sleep. And I, so that, that in and of itself, you know, I used my aura ring. Mm -hmm. uh, my deep wave sleep, you know, is typically, you know, nine minutes, I get nothing. Um, right. but when I'm I did in this, that book. Yeah, when yeah. I do the CJC of Amorlin, mm -hmm. I can bump that up, you know, 10%. Um, 15% and, and that might not sound like a lot but that's I mean for me it's a big difference um, so I love the CJC going to you know the Tessa Moreland yeah 
uh, great as it relates to some of those objective measures, you know. Right. I, but I just don't feel as good, you know. Um, so I know that you know my triglycerides go down, my C-reactive protein goes down, my uh, IGF-1 jumps a little bit, but I just don't feel nearly as good as I do on the CJC. It's, it's funny because in the clinic with my clients, yeah. my men say the same thing. Yeah. But my, I don't want to be stereotypical, but my Barbie doll, doll kind of females, yeah. love testimony. Yeah, I get it, and, and yeah. I, I mean, I lose I lose midsection weight uh, with the testimorolin, but in, in my experience, I just don't get the same well-being feeling I get with the CJC at the Morlin. Um, and, uh, and that's also, just as a side note, one of my biggest pet peeves from a science perspective is people dosing the GHRPs like the Epimoron by itself. Right. Uh, just because I know it's not sustainable, and I right. wanted to put that message out there for sure. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then beyond that, some of the newer things, uh, you know, like, um, and even, you know, some of the, the older things like the, the LGD4033, which has been around, uh, you know, in short courses um, and making sure that it's managed from an LH perspective, an FSH yeah. perspective, yeah. Uh, as well as, you know, the cholesterol. Uh, as long as it's, uh, as long as I monitor those things, I think the LGD is pretty effective. And that's, that's a SARM for some people who might not know what that is. Correct. Which is a yeah. selective antigen receptor modifier. Yeah, absolutely. And so yeah. it, it works on those DHT and testosterone receptors but doesn't convert to estradiol, it doesn't convert to DHT. So, you know, those typical side effects you would typically associate with um, an androgen like, you know, testosterone, for instance, right. like the, the hair loss, uh, you know, the, the acne or the gynecomastia, right. uh, you don't get those as much. And in short courses, you don't get any suppression and it looks to be, uh, you know, an, when managed appropriately, a very, very good course. And another, just a to side note, yeah. you see some doses online of 20 milligrams of yes. 25 milligrams. I think yes. that's crazy. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, the, I always point back to that Boston University study of 500 micrograms, um, you know, and that, that dose makes a huge difference for me. And it goes to speak again about some of that online supply. Whenever you're yeah. not getting it from a reputable source, some people can use 25 milligrams and not feel it. Whereas right. if I use 250, I feel it within three days. I know, I remember I saw you one time, then I yeah. saw you again, you, just, you like, were like swollen, and I was like, I don't have to try that. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm actually on that one myself, yeah. but I don't I don't dose it every day. Yeah. I kind of do it with my heavier works out or like three times per Absolutely. week, because I want to grow, but I don't want to like get yeah. too big, too fast. I don't want to get any stretchy mark issues or oh, anything. Definitely. So definitely. I'm, I'm actually incorporating that one myself, because for younger guys, and you don't want to suppress any other testosterone, sure. that's a good alternative for them. And I, and I have one guy, who did rad all right yeah one all nine yeah he came to me jacked up For jacked sure. up yeah. his cholesterol was through the roof his hdl was single digit i three. believe it i yeah. said dude you're gonna freaking kill yourself well and so it's interesting enough we uh one of our head chemists was one of the chemists who helped um do a lot of the clinical trials um in cr drug creation of r8140 uh -huh. and uh i, I don't want to bash it or scare anyone but yeah. but with that being said we choose we're not gonna do any of that because um we, I mean, even the animal trials, the animals would just have spontaneous death that they yeah. couldn't explain. And so, yeah. you know, that always, that's, t you know, terrifying and it's not something you need to do in order to get, you know, you can just stay committed, use some other products and it's still get a very similar result and you don't need to put yourself at risk. Um, and so the RAD-140 has always been a little bit, uh, I would say, something we stay away from. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad that you guys do. Yeah. You know, I only use products that you guys have yeah. met. And you know he he did his, his testosterone drop down to a hundred because yeah. there can be some testosterone suppression. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean he, he came in like a legitimate mess. Definitely. I was worried yeah. for him. Yeah. yeah, and and it's yeah and it, like I said you know same reason the the epimoral by itself isn't sustainable. You can't do those things as well and have them expect to be sustainable. Eventually you're going to crash and that's yeah. uh, and then you can lose a lot of those same benefits you were going for in the first place. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got a couple down. What else? Yeah. What else are you doing for your body? Yeah. Oh. Composition. Uh, you know, one of my one of my, as I was telling you right before uh, yeah. you saw we got on camera, the uh, five amino one MQ is one I'm very very excited about for a whole host of reasons. Um, you know, uh, people talk about the fasting mimicking diet, um, mm -hmm. and they talk about a lot of benefits of that, such as like the activation, uh, the, well, what they call the nutrient sensing cascade, right? Okay. Um, and one of those things in the, that, that happens when you fast is you get CERT one activation, and CERT one activation. Uh, you know, I'll, I won't talk about it as much until we yeah. go into those cinema yeah. right? yeah. I know. Yeah, we don't want to jump can, all the way into yeah. that. I can feel like, you pumping the brakes yeah, already. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, but what it does is it, it's one of those things that it's upregulated um, and then causes longer last, longer lifespans. Um, it's been classically shown in a variety of animals. Um, and so the 5-amino-1-MQ, what it does is it, it blocks a particular enzyme in your body 
which is upregulated as you get older. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that it blocks that enzyme uh, that's upregulated in particularly white adipose tissue. And that's that for, for that unhealthy fat. Right. Um, and so it just so happens that whenever you block that enzyme, you cause an increase in NAD+, plus, which is again associated with a decrease in age. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so, sorry, it's associated uh, with lower levels as you, as you get older. Um, so you want that to be increased, which causes that serotonin activation, which helps you live longer. But beyond that, it increases your metabolic rate. Mm -hmm. um, and then through another cascade via the methionine cycle, you increase uh, uh, another product, uh, which basically causes something called polyimmune flux, which causes increased uh, anabolic processes. Mm -hmm. So you're sort of increasing muscle mass, you're decreasing fat mass, and the animal trials showed around 10% body weight loss in just 11 days. And so, yeah, it, yeah, definitely yeah. significant. And, and um, with no visible changes in blood chemistry or mm -hmm. any type of behavioral changes. And so um, that one is really, really exciting on Horizon, which might um, might be a great product. And it, it sort of goes those that and MOTSC, which is a, you know another one we can talk about for yeah. the synolytic yeah. uh, optimization thing. They both have their hand both in the anti-aging world and also in the performance world, which is you know why the performance and health go hand in hand. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're throwing out some <laughs> decent amount of products there. That's the one that we were just talking about before yeah. the camera actually started that you said actually started to lean you out pretty quick. It did. It did really quickly. Um, and, you know, uh, I took it slow and steady, but whenever yeah. I, whenever it happened, it's, it started to roll pretty quickly. Yeah, and so um, That's one I yeah. definitely want before we leave today. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And, and again, just speaking from my experience, uh, you know, uh, I actually saw uh, everyone at the, the most recent International Peptide Society conference and then I saw uh, another doctor who was there um, just a couple, uh, just a week ago at another conference and he goes, uh, you, you know, you remind me of Shazam because it's like you said one word, you were huge and then you're small. I, you yeah. know, it was like the, uh, the the five amino I think was a, was a big part of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, you blew up and then now yeah. you're going to lean it down. Exactly. So I, I definitely want to try that one myself. Yeah. So what else What else do you do for your your body in terms of, of comps? So we talked about the SARMs, we talked about GH sure. or HRP. We, talk, we touched on mods and then yeah. we touched on the five amino. Yeah. Anything else that you're doing? Yeah, you know, um, besides, uh, you know, I... I Going into more of the health conscious related things, okay. I like the intermittent fasting. Sure. I like, um, uh, you know, I think that supplementation with like the McB12 shots, while not causing crazy differences, are, are, are solidly uh, good mm -hmm. references to the program, and uh, and I and I usually consider those whenever I'm I'm trying to optimize. Uh, beyond that, you know, I, I don't know that I do uh, a ton more. I would say it's just generally centers around that. Sure. Um, you know, whenever getting into more complicated, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, issues sometimes I'll at the end of you know doing something like LGD I might use uh, you know a kiss peptin or a DSIP the delta sleep inducing peptide yeah. in order to to give my LH a little bit of a bump right. uh, so I'm not causing any suppression issues but that's getting uh, you know sure, yeah. yeah a little bit more complicated but so, again all medically managed uh, by some 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 very so talk a little bit more about kiss peptin I mean I don't know yeah. if a lot of people know about that sure I know I don't use it currently in clinical practice and I think I'm gonna change that you know I've yeah. always used the the HCGs or the clo mid or the yeah. enclomiphene that I, you sure. know, I get from oh, you guys. Yeah, great one, yeah. You know, so I use those to upregulate my own testosterone and Definitely. then I use like an eczema stain in order yeah. to knock down some of the aromatization. Yeah. So where does that, that kispectin kind of, yeah. where does that fall in? It's difficult, you know, it, um, majority of the studies, so kispectin, uh, just to give a little background, actually yeah. is called kispectin because it was discovered in Hershey's, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, so, you know, pretty yeah. cool, pretty yeah. cool uh, nomenclature yeah. there. Uh, you know, usually when these things have like GW8152 or whatever right. it might be, that's a pretty right. cool uh, named product. It comes in two variants, Kispeptin 10 and Kispeptin 54. Uh, majority of the, um, the mechanism of action is it really stimulates your hypothalamus to produce the sex hormone stimulating um, type of hormones like luteinizing hormone and follicular stimulating hormone. Right. So it's sort of causing a reset to your brain to say, hey, let's, uh, let's you know, pump out some stimulation. Mm -hmm. um, and and so most of the research has been done as it relates to fertility, mm -hmm. you know, both in men and women, saying, hey, let's, uh, let's encourage your brain to put out some of these hormones in a natural, healthy fashion that your body's controlling. Mm -hmm. um, and as it relates to the LH benefit, or I should say the testosterone therapy benefit, is it, it's increasing LH and then uh, stimulating the testicles and all those lytic cells to produce testosterone. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it's, it's one of those which is a little clinically complicated because um, if you 
stimulate it too much, it can become unresponsive. So you sort of want to use it sparingly right. um, and in, in low doses, but whenever you do, you can get uh, an increase in LH and then an increase in testosterone. Um, and so, uh, you know, a lot of times the same thing, the same mechanism of stimulation can have, also happen with the delta sleep inducing peptide. Right. And so people will interchange those in order to give uh, a unique method of stimulation that's not blocking estrogen receptors, right. um, like the, like the, exemis, or sorry, the, uh, the clomid, or the, or in, in your case, the clomiphene, mm -hmm. um, and so uh, so they're all clinically useful tools. Uh, it just depends uh, with what you sort of want to prioritize. If you want to, uh, you know, activate those gonadotropin releasing hormone neurons, or if you want to uh, block the estrogen so that your body senses less of the uh, sex hormones and increases the same sure. same pathway. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start using that a little bit more. You know, I've talked with Dr. Seeds about it, and yeah. there's definitely an art to the dosing on that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, so it, yeah. it gets kind of complex. Same thing, you know, because you, you don't, like you said, you don't want to overdo it, mm -hmm. but you want to give them enough bump to where you do see like that one to 200 point increase sure. in testosterone, and yeah. you know, so there, there's and, an art and that, to that. Yeah, and, and the other thing is, uh, you know, a lot of people just, you know, whenever, whenever it comes to, hey, what do I feel, right, when I use yeah. it, a lot of people will get um, sort of a sense of well-being that's sort of hard to quantify. Um, and, uh, and, you know, most of the studies that have been done on increasing LH have been done in, you know, uh, children who are, you know, not going through puberty like they should. But, you know, the, what we see in our adult patients are, hey, instead of, you all, they get that pump testosterone um, and they feel a little bit better than maybe they would even get with exogenous dosing of the same, the same type. Right. Um, and so, yeah, from a patient perspective, that's, I would say, also something anecdotally I often hear. Yeah, I'm gonna have to try that one out mm -hmm. on, on my clients. So, you know, we, I think we covered the body, you know, yeah. and I, I'm like you, you know, I've, I've done the GHRHRP, sure. um, primarily CJC. Yeah. I actually, I'm one of those rare cases to where when I first started, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. You know, I first yeah. started, actually about two weeks later, I felt like crap, mm -hmm. all right? And yeah. then I didn't know why, so, I put on the form IPS. You know what's going on. Doctor Seeds answered it, and yeah. he was he said, "Man, you gotta you gotta work on the immune system first, <laughs> yeah, because it's stimulating too much of the cells that can cause like a little brain fog and fatigue." Exactly. But I'm the only one that I know of that that's happened to. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. but now I'm I'm back on the CJC Ipramorelin. Yeah. Um, I do like the LGD. Yeah, LGD is great. Yeah. Like, I do like that one. Like I said, I'm on eczemastain and clopamine for my testosterone yeah. levels, but that's. All I'm kind of doing, I, I did MK77. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've done that one a little bit, and I'm actually using that on a couple clients. I actually have a few females yeah. who are really tiny, petite, thin, sure. who have come to me and said, I want to gain weight. Sure. I yeah. don't hear that very often. <laughs> no, 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 I want to lose weight, yeah. but I have, I have a couple on the MK, yeah. and, and they're, they're gaining weight. Yeah, yeah one, one of the other things I want to, I mean, there are a couple things we can mention that I yeah. forgot about. Okay. Um, Tessapensine being one, it's about to be available uh, again, uh, mm -hmm. which has some pretty good weight loss effects. Um, but also, we do a topical fat loss cream um, with the aminophylline and glycerotinic acid. Yeah. The health one's been surprisingly successful at, at more of a sculpting type okay. thing. So not, not, not to be used for super obese patients who think that they're gonna you know, shed all of their belly overnight, right. but uh, what it does is it low lowers that lipolytic threshold and allows you to be able to, to lose fat first in a certain area. It's the same, you know, body biochemistry, which sort of causes men to gain that midsection weight and women right. to gain a little bit more, you know, like peripheral weight. Right. Um, so you're just sort of hijacking that same thing. We get really good reports on that one too. Um, I haven't used a ton of it personally, uh, but I do hear good reports on it. Okay, yeah, because you know, most of my clients are, are yeah. female. I'd have to say sure. now it's about a 70-30 mix of males. Yeah. And they always want something to lose weight. Yeah. Always, always, always want to lose weight. And I use multiple peptides to help them get there with some fasting and all these other things. And I haven't used the cream yet, but they've been asking because women, women will be like, I have this area underneath my arms, yeah. this little little flabby or like this little pooch that they, that they have right here. Yeah. So that cream, would that be like a good instance to use yeah. that in combination with everything? Definitely. It, okay. And, it, and, it, and I want to make the point that it, you know, that, it, that increases CAMP and just lowers the lipolytic threshold. But if you're not dieting, if you're not doing the right things, if you're not going to be losing weight normally, right. you won't lose weight with this. And so okay. uh, you, you, you need to, to eat right, you need to commit to the, the other steps that you need to do because then you can lose weight in that particular area, but if you're not doing the other right things, then it's essentially a, 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 a lotion. <laughs> right, yeah. so, and because I'll probably have clients thinking right now, well, can I get me a small swimming pool that I can just swim in? Yeah, I, I wish, right? Yeah, it's not gonna work like that, I guess. Yeah. So I think we covered you know, body pretty good and what you sure. did and what you do. So now you know, maybe we can make a little pivot and talk. Um, let's talk about 
healing. Sure. Let's talk about body healing because yeah. if we are exercising, if we are taxing the body, which we should be doing in order to get any kind of growth or any kind of physical benefit, we're gonna hurt ourselves, sure. right? So what are some things that you like to do if your body's injured? Yeah, um, you know, these, you know, the, the thing with injury is that, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the peptides which are most common for injury are the tried and true methods, so the BPC and the thymus and beta-4. Right. Uh, you know, I was just referencing, you know, I've had a, a couple injuries uh, since the, you know, the peptide space has gotten, you know, pretty big. Uh -huh. And all my experience with the thymus and beta-4 and BPC has been extremely positive. I often talk about I had a hamstring tear and I was like, hey, you know, I'm just going to do a, a week of the thymus and beta-4. And, you know, I didn't get a lot at day seven or six. I'm still in a lot of pain. I had one injection of the BPC. Uh, and it got 90% pain reduction the next morning. And so that one was, was huge for me. Um, but I also, that was sort of a soft tissue acute injury that was right. pretty, you know, pretty significant. Whereas, yeah, I've also been dealing with the opposite, which is a chronic, more lagging injury, and that's a, you know, a shoulder injury. Right. Um, and so uh, with that, um, you know, it, it's been a little bit different treatment strategy, but it's mm -hmm. again, that same combo has yielded some great results. Mm -hmm. Even just, uh, you know, if I feel the pain coming up, or I know I particularly stressed it that day, the thymus and beta-4 and BPC reduced delayed onset muscle soreness. They, it allows me a little bit more range of motion. I get that inflammation down. Mm -hmm. And so those are the tried and true methods for me personally and what I've tried. Um, you know, what a lot of other things I see physicians prescribing are things like the pentazan polysulfate yeah. um, for more of that osteoarthritis type thing, which can be really, really hard to fix. I mean, there's not a lot out there. And then one of the newer ones which people start throwing in um, is the GHK copper. Um, the GHK copper, you know, most people think of as cosmetic peptide, mm -hmm. um, but, but it's effective to help heal some of those. Uh, tendons and ligaments, it just the switch it has in your body for tissue repair and remodeling mm -hmm. um, tends to be beneficial in a lot of different injuries. So I would say that's the constellation of the four things we see by far the most often. And that's not counting the growth hormone secreted gogs, which um, are obviously uh, are very effective at causing tissue repair as well. Yeah, the, the interesting thing about some of the thymuses and the BPC combinations, I know for me, I suffer from like chronic leaky gut, man. Sure. I've got food sensitivities yeah. out the yin yang, a chronic leaky gut, chronic fatigue yeah. from it. And then I started taking the BPC, the thymus and alpha, and I rotate, rotate it with yeah. thymus and beta four. Yeah, absolutely. And when I do that, I don't get hives anymore. Yeah. My food tolerances are a lot better. And then from a musculoskeletal standpoint, I'm also not getting the DOMS that I used to get. Sure. When I'm hurting myself, it's healing a little faster. Definitely. So that little trifecta right there, yeah. I, I'm, I'm on like all the time. And I'm glad you I'm glad you brought the thymus alpha one because yeah. we, we didn't put it in any of those categories, right? No, no. no. Squarely into any of those categories. No, but we'll throw it all in all of those categories. Yeah, right? yeah. And so the thymus alpha, I mean, I've told you again and again, it's my favorite peptide. Uh, yeah. Just because of all the things it can do for the immune system. And uh, I mean, it, it, it fits into repair and recovery, it fits into performance. It fits in the brain. It fits in the synalytics. It's it's an amazing, amazing product. Um, and so I'm glad, definitely glad you brought that yeah. up. Um, and one of the other things that, that might fit that trifecta, or at least might be added to that trifecta, is a new product that we're offering called uh, KPV. And this is the first time I've ever talked about it. But yeah, yeah the KPV is that fragment of melanocyte stimulating hormone, which possesses a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. And so most of the time, it's been used in psoriasis. It's been used in Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. So I'm, I'd be interested in seeing how it maybe it fits into that food sensitivity uh, type pathway. Currently, we're doing it uh, as an enteric coated capsule for Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. And, and it's still very, very new for us. But we're getting, I would say, majority positive feedback. It's got some great studies. That's another one I'd like to try then. Yeah. Because I do um, Melanotan too, not just for tanning purposes. Sure but because of the MC34 exactly, and the yeah. TAH117 stabilization, because yeah. I have a positive ANA. So I do have some kind of autoimmune yeah. brewing. I think most of us do, you know, yeah. if, if you kind of look at that stuff. So I would be interested in trying that. Yeah, well. and, yeah, no, and, and the, the effects on just autoimmune disease uh, has been has been pretty well described. Mostly done as, like I said, psoriasis and Crohn's and also colitis, but uh, you know, even doing it as an injectable for some of those other auto, more diffuse autoimmune things yeah. is, is also, I think, pretty promising. Awesome. And you know, you, you know, we both brought up thymus and alpha one. And when I was in the mastermind, you yeah. know, we had to go around and you know say which one's your favorite. Now, most people would say like a growth hormone. One sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mine was thymus and alpha one. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and <laughs> the reason why for me is because clinically it's a game changer. Yeah. So the number one symptom I typically hear is, is fatigue. And then right after that, it's gonna be weight. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere along the cascade, it's you know usually libido or strength or something like that. But when I notice if I'm upregulating with CJCs, if I'm doing everything and I have a client that's just not getting better, they're yeah. still tired. 
I throw in a thymus and alpha one, mm-hmm. game changer. Yeah. And I've had kids, kids, young adults with um, reactivated FC bar. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. when you use a thymus and alpha on them, totally changes. So yeah. for me, I've seen some profound difference with just that one peptide. Definitely. You put yeah. them in with those other ones that we've been talking about, Yeah. you can take somebody from here to here. Yeah, no, I always play, we, yeah. we play like a, 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 a game in the office where it's like with two products, the Thymus and Alpha 1 and and we say, hey, uh, you know, some concern about, you know, X, Y disease. Yeah. Let's see if there's a study. And, you know, sure enough, you know, we can find Thymus and Alpha studies for just about any type of cancer. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, herpes simplex, yeah. you can find it for Epstein-Barr. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things that just, it affects so many different things because of it of its multiple mechanisms of action, reducing inflammation, encouraging the immune system, uh, you know, and so those those two products in particular just have so much data in so many different promising areas, and it's uh, and all with the side effect profile, which is essentially nothing. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah and uh, yeah, so that one's always you know, like I said, definitely my favorite as well. Yeah, and like you said, there's there's real no downside yeah. to to time missing off at all, and I will dose it kind of heavy, you know, it yeah. depends on someone's budget, exactly. but but if they yeah. have the budget for it. You know, I'll dose it heavy, you know, like a one and a half milligram. Yeah. I mean, I'll dose it heavy sure. for a couple of weeks and then back down, yeah. and then as it exacerbates. So definitely love thymus. And so we covered some of the body ones. Now we can move to the brain. Sure. So nootropics, I mean, that's a that's a hot and heavy subject right yeah. now, man. Yeah, it's also one of the best areas for peptides. I mean, yeah. uh, it's one of the most promising, and, and new and promising things are coming out all the time. Uh, you know, the, the ones that, that I had a lot of, I mean, I've tried all of them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and not just you know, not just uh, the the prescription ones, but you know, even even some of the non-prescription ones, even the more commoditized stuff like the Piracetam, the Lion's Mane, or Rhodiola. Yeah. You know, yeah. I tried it all. Yeah. Um, and and it adds some good context because you get to see you know the different profiles of each. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know, I, the the lowest entry ones and, and the things that work immediately uh, are always great. You know, the C Link, the C Max. Mm-hmm. Um, the anaracetam, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, those are, I would say, the constellation that, that we typically see the most often because they work immediately, right. you know, um, whereas some of the other ones, uh, which are really, really promising, like the, you know, uh, the FGLL or the dihexa mm-hmm. or the cerebral lysin, um, might take a little bit more time to see an effect, but but they're great for your brain for long-term functioning. And so I usually, that's how you sort of categorize most of the nootropics is, you know, short acting, but but effective, mm-hmm. or the more longer acting, but uh, but have benefits for a long, long time. And so, um, you know, you sort of weigh those two, and I, I usually see, you know, we recommend people do a little bit of both, so you get sure. the immediate benefit, but also long-term benefit. And I do, I like to combine them. Sometimes, you know, I look at the brain as, depending on how they're presenting, if, sure. if it's a lot of fatigue, and I know they have some autoimmune issues, I know they have leaky gut, I, a lot, I like to use like a cleaning. Yeah. So I like to use like a cerebralize and you know sure. or a dihexa like to kind of yeah. clean and then upregulate with the C-max, the Langs, and the anaracetans. Yeah. So let, let's break them down individually because we're just throwing them all out there. And I know dihex is getting a lot of information or yeah. popularity, mm-hmm. but let's start with tried and true cerebralize. Yeah, because that's I think our both our yeah. favorite. Definitely, I'm, that's the one I noticed hands down. Yeah. So it, so tell me about it for you. No, agreed. Yeah. So. Uh, in terms of what I feel, you know, I, I my, the first reason I decided, hey, like let's let's talk about trying this is because um, of its studies on ApoE4 variants, and that's one of the ones that I express. Um, and so I was like, hey, I want to prevent Alzheimer's. I see this in my family. Would this be a good choice for me and them, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and so immediately doing this long term protocol, you just get a little bit more mental clarity. Yeah. Um, and, and and it's hard to sort of articulate what that feels like mm-hmm. as a patient. And I think that everyone might feel a little bit differently subjectively uh, with that, but the data is super promising as it relates to reducing beta and tau amyloid plaques, um, you know, causing a bunch of neuroregenerative processes. I mean, it's got studies in stroke, Alzheimer's, ALS, MS. Like I said, it, the game we play is, hey, what hasn't it been studied, <laughs> right? right. Um, right. And, and so, but it, I just felt more mental clarity, um, more ability to focus, to push through on, you know, any type of deadline that I might have, mm-hmm. or uh, you know, continue my work days. And so uh, I had much less of that fatigue, fatigue that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've used it as well. You know, I think I spoke to you about it, and I got it immediately. Yeah. Um, for me, I have ADHD. Sure. You know, so I'm I'm scatterbrained all over the map, high activity, obsessive compulsive, a lot of anxiety. You know, so for me, when I started to do it. It was not immediate, like, like you said. It's it's yeah. hard to quantify immediately. 
But I noticed I could focus, I could slow down my thoughts, I could study, because I'm studying for the masterminds, IPS, I'm like, I'm able to consume a lot more data. Then several weeks into it, almost a month into it, I started recalling crap back that I went to school with. I'm remembering things out of textbooks that I haven't read in a decade. So it was really weird. I'm like, all right, now how do I sustain this? Yeah. So I kept doing it. <laughs> and of course, it starts to wear down. And yeah. then I didn't notice thing after a while. And it, you know, I had to stop it. But I'm telling you, that that turned the light bulb on Definitely. big time. So I, I love Cerebral Elias. And, and I have a, a, a client who came to this country speaking Spanish only. And her husband, affluent, wealthy. Mm-hmm. And he wanted her to really pick up the English language. And she just couldn't. She came to me in you know, broken English. I need you to fix my brain. I've always had this brain problem sure. since I was a child. And I said, okay, I'll put you on cerebral eyes and yeah. guarantee nothing, yeah. but we'll see what happens. Next time I saw her, two and a half months later, she did oh, wow. two rounds of it, oh, yeah. speaking English to me, dude. That's crazy. Speaking English. Yeah. She was crying her eyes out, talking to me about it in English. And she's saying now that she's working on able to read the yeah. English language because she was with her tutor and her tutor's like, what have you been doing? That's awesome. So I just, I just switched her, it gives me chills, dude. Yeah. So like, I, just, I just switched her from cerebral Eliasson um, to now we're doing the Slank C-Max and sure. Aniracetam. That's awesome. And, and I'm gonna continue that down the path and then I told her we could probably fold in like a .hexa yeah. and then rotate at FGL, which yeah. I'm sure we'll talk about some of Yeah, no, I do, yeah. and I think that's a perfect segue to the FGL, just okay. because I had, you know, sort of like you were talking with textbooks, yeah. I had a, you know, a pretty similar experience with the FGL and the FGL is an interesting one. I'll just go a little bit to the science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it, uh, it's called FG loop peptide. It, it mimics neural cell adhesion molecules, which um, uh, you know can promote uh, new uh, neurite outgrowth in the brain. Okay. And so increasing that neuronal connectivity, uh, but particularly it also creates, instead of these spindle, what they call spindle dendrites, it creates more mushroom-shaped dendrites. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is associated with better long-term memory. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I noticed a short-term memory benefit, um, and so even with, so, the the biggest issue is it's expensive, um, yeah. and it's and it's uh, it is nasally bioavailable, but the issue is you have to use too high of doses, which makes it cost prohibitive. Right. Um, and so, uh, but but I, I was remembering details I didn't, I would never remember prior, like uh, you know just briefly looking at someone's 23andMe genetic data and then remembering what percentage they were of each nationality, even though I hadn't, I, there's no way I would remember that earlier. Yeah. Um, and so uh, that for me was like a really uh, interesting, um, you know, sort of case study for me and, and it might be worth considering that particular patient uh, if, yeah. you know, if that's what they're going for. Absolutely. Was it, was it sustainable? Did it last or did uh, it start to fade? Well, you know, unfortunately my compliance sort of wasn't as great on that. Um, yeah. And so even though I noticed the difference, you know, with as much as I travel, it, you know, it, it was one thing I didn't sustain. So I loved it, but, uh, and I'll probably do it definitely again, but uh, definitely need to say a little bit more Okay. And then, you know, segue, just jump right into Dihexa, kind of kind of what it is and the end it's for, and you know, sure. how, how that one kind of works. Yeah. And then I guess we could talk about, you know, because everybody's going to want these. Yeah. You know, they have to be safe and you, you have to cycle them and you yeah. can't be on them gas pedal all the time. You really can't, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Okay. And yeah, otherwise, uh, you know, your body just develops the tolerance. Your body's really good at regulating itself. And so that's yeah. what we, you know, we always try and do, right, is uh, to, to give it the necessary tools to do the best job. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, but yeah, no, the, the dihex is also, um, one of the ones that I think that's probably, or variants of dihex, the variants of those oral angiotensin four derivatives mm-hmm. uh, are some of the most promising just because they work on just about every model of cognitive dysfunction. Mm-hmm. Just like a little bit like the cerebellis, and they, they, they have so many different applications. Um, and in some of the initial trials, particularly uh, you know with the dihex, has just shown great strength um, in terms of being able to affect really, really difficult disease statuses. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, even relatively progress Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. I always point out a YouTube video that Dr. Harding did um, that shows, you know, uh, these, these rats hanging from a clothesline and, yeah. and, and how much uh, better the, the Parkinson's, the, the rat they had induced Parkinson's in uh, was able to hold on and keep himself up for twice the length of the normal rat, mm-hmm. um, which goes to show that the dihex is having a pretty significant benefit um, in that model. And that might just be that model, and there's a lot more uh, things to go, but overall it looks to be effective in just about every model it's been in. Um, and that, that's always really, really promising. Obviously a lot more needs to be done, but super exciting. So can, can that one be used just for 
cognitive enhancement, or do you need to save that for like the big gun conditions? You know, it's 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 difficult to say at the moment. Yeah. I think that uh, that and the FGL, one of the FGL, uh, with, you know, without going back to it, yeah. uh, has been studied to help with stroke, uh, to help with depression, to help with, um, you know, like I said, memory and Alzheimer's. But uh, one of the biggest things is that it works better in, in, in people who are neural cell adhesion molecule deficient. There's no test out there now to know if you're deficient of the neural cell adhesion molecule. Mm -hmm. So maybe one of the reasons that I responded so well to it was because maybe I am having a little bit of deficiency. Maybe it's some of my, you know, previous brain trauma or something sure. of that nature. But sure. but ultimately, uh, you know, I had a great response. And so, uh, you know, maybe is it treating a deficiency or is it optimizing me? It's a little difficult to say, but mm -hmm. um, but either way, you know, it, good clinical outcome. Yeah, I'm using Dihexa right now, actually. And I'm only doing 20 milligrams, you know, just low dose, kind of on the back of the neck. Sure. Because I've got a lot of concussions in my yep. history, you know, from martial arts background. Sure. So back then it was okay to get knocked out, you know, and think that there was going to be no repercussions. So I'm using it now, and, and I do feel clearer of mind. Sure. But not on the same playing field as cerebralizing for yeah. me. Cerebralizing, yeah. Cerebralizing was, uh, is, is great. And, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we have a lot more people now doing the cerebralizing IV as well, which is yeah. interesting. How's, how's that going? Yeah, well, so traditionally, most of the cerebralizing studies have been done IV, but they're in the more, I would say, acute situations, such as, you know, stroke. Right. Um, and, but, but people are doing, you know, maintenance doses every so often of a, you know, 20 to 50 mLs of cerebral isom, which is pretty high dosing. Yeah. Uh, but they're getting we're getting good responses uh, across the board. So you know, for some people it makes sense to do it more often. Other people at higher doses, and so it's just a really case dependent. Awesome. So I, I won't keep you too much longer, but let's yeah. um let's touch on the synalytics now. That that's yeah. going to be a very popular yeah. popular <laughs> subject as as people get more educated in these peptides and they and they start listening to some of these yeah. kind of, of interviews. Um, so synalytics is, is definitely an area where science is seriously investigating. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so go ahead and, and, and talk about some of what maybe yeah. you've done or yeah. what you kind of hear of other people doing. I know yeah. Seeds talks a lot about rapamycin. Yeah, and things. the rapamycin uh, really was popularized by two physicians, uh, Dr. Black Sloney and then Dr. Green. Uh, they sort of have been pioneering this as an anti-aging treatment. Um, and it, it hasn't been, you know, the rapamycin, um, well, synalytics as a whole is a relatively new thought process. Uh -huh. The idea um, being uh, is that as you age, you have a lot of cells which sort of stop doing what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and they sort of just freeze. They pause because they know they're not supposed to continue doing something bad, mm -hmm. but they're just, uh, they're not really sure where to go. So they just pause. And whenever they pause, they secrete a lot of inflammatory mediators uh, that are not good for the body. And as a result, a lot of people have seen that this uh, can age the body prematurely. Um, and so there have been even some studies, a lot of times they induce this uh, state of cells via things like chemotherapy, via some other things. And, and what you see is rapid uh, aging. Um, mm -hmm. And so a lot of people have hypothesized that one of the reasons you see as much kidney dysfunction as you do is because of this synolytic process. And it's been proven that if you get rid of these cells, you reduce all these unnatural inflammatory mediators. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in the case of the kidneys, you can even restore kidney GFRs, uh, um, from air filtration rates, and, and, and which is one of the main functions of kidney function. And so what we see is, you know, even in, in uh, mice-induced models, for instance, if you can clear those senescent cells, they uh, start to behave, their blood chemistries look better, they, they even reduce their gray hair, they reduce, they improve the thickness of hair. All these, you know, even outward signs of uh, youth and vitality are sort of restored. And so the idea is maybe, hey, maybe we should look into this for the human model, right? Let's, let's see how, uh, you know, senescence affects uh, humans. And there's been, you know, uh, data in, right, going back to sort of sort one, rapamycin mm -hmm. um, can sort of inhibit, uh, you know, uh, mTOR and then cause that um, decrease in senescent cells, which uh, can extend lifespan. It's been shown in companion animals like dogs. It's been shown in, you know, uh, classically in worms, uh, but also in, you know, uh, you know, in a lot of different species. And so, um, and, and the idea is that it can do the same in humans. Yeah, and I'm just starting to introduce that concept, you sure. know, in my clinic because not everybody's ready to talk about similar Oh, cells. it's, yeah. All right, yeah. don't talk about make me thin, make me have more energy, but sure. they have no clue about synalytics. So I've, I've done it on a basic level. So, you know, with the fasting, mm -hmm. with ketone esters, sure. some of those other things. I like to use a little TA1, mm -hmm. a little CJC. It's going to help with that synalytic process. Yeah. Have not used rapamycin yet. Yeah. Have you? 
I haven't personally. Yeah, but I, I, we were talking about yeah, it before. I, but, yeah. but uh, you know, I always like to isolate uh, any type of treatment, so I know exactly yeah, how it's what, what. get get the variables. Yeah. Um, but I but I definitely plan on to it. I probably plan on adding the fizetin to it, maybe the quercetin, uh-huh. uh, maybe the serostilbein. And um, but but I think that. Uh, you know, uh, in terms of that, I definitely think that that's a protocol I really, really want. Something else I want to mention is, you know, it's hard to have this conversation because a lot of people aren't even aware of what the aging process is. Right. Um, and so, so it, it's difficult to frame that. But with that being said, there are some objective things coming out here soon, which might really be able to push that discussion forward. Okay. Um, there's something called the phenotypic aging, which looks at the epigenetics, so how your DNA changes. Um, as a result of uh, your lifestyle, mm-hmm. and so, and actually, it's, it's been it's actually a better predictor of age than um, than things like telomeres. Right? So the right. idea is that you can look at this, and within you know a year or six months, both ways, you can say how old a person is just by their their the epigenetic changes in their body, which is mm-hmm. pretty crazy. So the two people who are most interested in this tend to be, uh, you know. Uh, forensic investigators because they might be able to find DNA on the site and tell how old the person is that that was there. Um, The other big issue is people want, insurance companies really want this technology because it's the age is still the most highly correlated um, biomarker for death. And so the idea is that, um, you know, with those two things, they'll be able to know a lot more about you. But from a health perspective, it's super, super exciting because it gives us a independent factor, which is also the biggest correlated to death. Right. Um, and so, uh, so we can start to develop treatment strategies which use this as a marker which we can improve. Um, so you might be 38, but have an epigenetic clock that reads 30, right? Right. And that's pretty cool. And so that that idea, and that science is coming out. It's been done via a joint venture between, um, you know, UCLA and USC. So mostly Southern California, mm-hmm. um, but but really really cool stuff. And I think what we'll see is that these similar treatments are are gonna not just have data in kidney function anymore, and not just have this subjective data in animal trials, but also maybe show a difference on some of those more objective measures like this uh, this epigenetic aging. Yeah, I was reading the, the trim study that they came yep. out with with GH, you know, growth hormone, exactly. and how it would change the epidemiological age or biological age exactly. of those people. And it's like, all right, they're only using one product. Yeah. Imagine what we could do with all the peptides that we use Definitely. to change that. Yep. I would love to see like small trials or IRBs using synolytics and a couple other things to see what is that going to really do. Definitely. And and even now, you know, the thought, the uh, it's moving so quickly and so fast and there's yeah. so much good data coming out that it's even now maneuvering to things like um, uh, how to limit senescent cells and then to optimize function. And that's where we get into the mitochondrial peptides, yep. like the yeah. MOTSC, yeah. the mm-hmm. humanin, um, you know, and even some of the other things like the five amino, which we started with for, right. yeah, and now we're back we're to back it. We're back to and so, circling around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I think that, uh, yeah, it's super, super promising things there. But what, overall, what we're just, it just adds so much credence to the, the the need and value of preventative medicine and looking mm. at, you know, optimization that's going hand in hand with preventative medicine because, uh, you know, they, they're wholly related. Yeah, and I'm glad you used that word optimization yeah. because I use it a lot in, in practice, yeah. you know, I'm optimization and performance and a lot of people think that, oh, that's just, you know, someone trying to get bigger. It's like, no, yeah. optimization is, is kind of the way you need to be to exactly. be preventative. It is, yeah. It's yeah. Staying, staying in that healthy, safe range so that you yeah. have longevity and you have uh, you can live not just a, a long life, but also one that's fulfilling and healthy. Yeah, and, and I do want people to know that I wouldn't consider myself a peptide expert just because you see me talking to Ryan or because <laughs> I'm in the IPS. I am a student of peptides, mm-hmm. and I think we all are because it's yeah. such an emerging science. We can't really say that we're experts at it because it's sure. it's too changing, it's it's too involved, yeah. and, and you know we're we're constantly you know yeah. learning at all times. Definitely. So to, just just to finish up, I know we want to get out of here. Um, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about vanity. Sure. All right, everybody loves. Vanity. <laughs> so, another complaint that I get with my female clients, especially on HRT, I do pellet therapy. Sure. Hair, man, hair. Mm-hmm. That everybody wants nice hair, whether it's female yeah. or male. So, what do we got for hair? Yeah. So, hair is another one which you know is really exciting. We see yeah. some good, good results, mm-hmm. and um, and I, I know as an IPS member, you've also probably seen some of those before and afters. We've done yes. our IRB. Yeah. Um, but uh, but for hair, you know, there are a lot of etiologies for hair loss, as you know, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, but by far and away, the number one, which one we see, is androgenic alopecia. So men losing their hair as they age, 
as a result of um, some genetics which predispose them to be sensitive to DHT. Okay. Um, and so for that product, we, you know, the typical things that you see are things like Rogaine, mm -hmm. things like, uh, you know, finasteride orally, which block the conversion of DH or testosterone converting to DHT. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's another reason that people say, you know, you, you would lose hair if you do steroids, right? Or you do testosterone, it's because yeah. testosterone converts to DHT. Right. And so most of the science has been focused on how do we prevent the gut conversion. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most promising things that we've seen is a mechanism of action which doesn't focus on stopping that conversion. It focuses on stopping the toxicity of DHT to that hair follicle. Mm -hmm. And that's been the combination for us of the, uh, the valproic acid and mm -hmm. another product uh, called PTD-DBM. Yes. Um, the PTD-DBM and valproic acid combination, I always sort of like to frame it as a way of, hey, you know, um, this pathway is something we want to get up regulated. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is activate this pathway uh, with the uh, without pro acid. It's almost like putting the gas on the pedal. Mm -hmm. And then the PTD-DBM actually inhibits the inhibition. So it's almost like cutting the brakes, right? Mm -hmm. We make sure you can't stop on the brakes. So we're, we're pumping the gas and we're cutting the brakes, uh, leading to this pathway being up regulated, which prevents the DHT from being toxic. Mm -hmm. And what we see is hair regrowth in a relatively short amount of time compared to some of these things uh, you know most hair studies take uh, you know a minimum of six months because it takes so long to see a change mm -hmm. the hair cycle is typically a long one um, and so this one we can even see results in you know four to five weeks which uh, in you know the best cases mm -hmm. um, but but still that's uh, significantly better than what you would see with over-the-counter you know monoxidil like Rogaine yeah. or e even some of these other you know compounded prescription items and so uh, that one's been really, really promising for us, and I know you've had some experience with a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I started rolling it out, you know, when you guys made it available, um, sure. and we're rolling it out to my clients. Like I said, they're all on all on hormones, sure. and um, I can't mention it, but I have one person right now who's doing it consistently, and I'm not an aesthetics person, yeah. so I didn't even know what a micro derma roller was <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. up until recently. But she, she kind of micro needles and then sprays it and rubs it in every single night. Yeah. Hair growth at one and a half months. Now. That's crazy, yeah. Like already grown and she has significant hair issues. Yeah. So she's excited and then a lot of other clients are reporting hair growth within that month and a half. Yeah. And it's like dramatic. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's, I'm surprising. It's crazy and it's just to, to reiterate that the um, micro needling has been established as a a way to regrow hair for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that the way that it does that is it causes an intracellular cascade which increases this WNT beta catenin pathway. It's the mm -hmm. same pathway that the PTD and valproic acids working on. Mm -hmm. And so, um, again, another really, really promising, uh, it makes sense, right? It all makes yeah. sense. It all makes total sense. Yeah. And then, um, I guess the last thing I, my clients want is something for their skin. Like I yeah. said, I'm not an aesthetics guy but something for the skin. You know, I know that there's a lot of people who sell GHKCU over the counter but it's in these little minute amounts, probably not stable. Sure. So, so what, what do you guys have? You have some good stuff, so. Yeah, yeah, the, the yeah. G, yeah, so the GHK Copper is uh, our premier probably skin product just mm -hmm. because it's reliable and, and most people see great results with it. Yeah. It's uh, been studied to have a 70% increase in collagen synthesis, which is, you know, unheard of. Mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that, it also reduces fine lines and wrinkles by around 24 to 35%, depending on the study. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then, Beyond all of that, it also has been studied versus things that are prescription grade, like the retinoic acid and vitamin C, and we know it outperforms. And so this is a really, really good start. Um, in addition, it has all those other effects we talked about with the genetic changes and wound healing and mm -hmm. tissue remodeling. Um, so that one's popular. And then additionally, cosmetic, we're, uh, cosmetic peptides are just a huge, huge category. Mm -hmm. um, things like the, I'll just list out a ton of, you know, uh, Botox-like peptides, as they're called as a class, which mm -hmm. Um, interfere with acetylcholine release and act a lot like Botox, but are not as invasive, uh, not as long-lasting, not as sort of almost, oftentimes possibly dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they, the things like the SNAP8, the argireline, the lutefazel, mm -hmm. all those combinations, um, in addition to the GHK, have been pretty successful for us. And, and you have a compound cream of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, now I'm going to get a hundred calls on that, <laughs> which I can't get it yeah. currently. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's an, a, another good product we definitely want to start yeah. using. And, and that's my girls that work in the office. They started microneedling their face before the GHK sure. with even ridiculous yeah. results, man. Definitely. And, and uh, I actually bought yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. I actually bought one. I'm going to start doing it. It's, no, it, yeah. it, it works. And, and, and uh, you know, even for 
even for the people who are like, uh, you know, just as a preventative like skincare routine, it's great. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also helps with wound healing, and it just goes to show you the power of it, right? Yeah. You know, I had a a, a biopsy on my nose um, just to you know for for a lesion, and um, and I'll tell you before I even got the biopsy results back, my nose had healed just because of the GHK. No one can yeah. even say it was a biopsy, and so um, a pretty cool pretty cool anecdotal story to show hey, it's having this effect on skin, which can be beneficial in a lot of ways. Yeah, I use it on my wounds too, man. Yeah. Cut the bridge of my nose right here because I hit it on a trunk, busted yeah. it open when we were just throwing sandbag in, and sometimes I get cuts on my arms, and I'll use yeah. it, and it works. It heals it yeah. up like that. I've seen some uh, you know, before and afters of things like a bike uh, crash where they just mm -hmm. did unilateral application of a combination of you know things like AOD or VPC or thymosin, or sorry, or uh, the GHK, and uh, you see, there's a before, you know, before and after, yeah. the bilateral one hand being completely healed, the other showing like it was injured yesterday. And so uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. So I think we've covered a lot yeah. of peptide ground. <laughs> are, are there any peptides or anything that you guys, Taylor Man, have coming out that you kind of want to yeah. segue or maybe yeah. mention or not mention? <laughs> yeah, you Is know, there anything on the horizon you want to talk about? Yeah, I think we've talked about some of the newer ones, which we've mm -hmm. uh, been really, really excited about. I mentioned one to you today that I haven't mentioned a lot to anyone, which is a, a product for pain and neuropathy, which mm -hmm. can be a really hopeless uh, patient population. So if you can add a new therapeutic strategy for those people, Absolutely. it's always very, very exciting. And, and so we have uh, one that we're producing here pretty quickly called the ARA290. Uh, okay. And I think that one's exciting. But, but you know, we always we have a really, really long process to bringing out these new products and so um, it's always um, it's always a long process and one we like to bet uh, a lot and so as you know it can be frustrating at times yeah, but, uh, can, can. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but that's why yeah. I said I know I'm getting a good product right, from exactly. you guys because you put in the actual work to yeah. test it make sure that it's pure make sure everything's gonna work definitely. although we're over here chomping at the bit like <laughs> when, when can I get my hands on this yeah stuff? but it's probably better that way definitely and, and then one one uh, the other one that I would say has been really popular for us has been that anti-anxiety product the DHHB yep. um, and that one's been relatively new, only came out you know, three and a half weeks ago, but it's been a m massively successful in terms of demand. Uh, and people always love it. It's something they tell immediately, yep. um, they know it's working. Yeah, I tried that one, yeah. like everything else. <laughs> and, and I can attest that DHHB does work, yeah. especially if you're an anxious person, have trouble sleeping, sure. can't shut your mind off. Um, it does work. Can't mix it with alcohol, exactly. but um, yeah. but um, it's it's another good product that you yeah. guys have. So yeah, and then I so yeah, we like I said we covered a lot of ground. And, you yeah. know, there's still so much we could even cover. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to do another one of these, man. Exactly. And, yeah. and to get in a little more, but I think we covered all the hot hot awesome. topics. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate your time on yeah. this. It oh, was, it was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah thanks so much. Uh,